Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. I'm your host, JK MAZ, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. All right, what's up, guys? We have Dominic with us. Some of you who've been following me for a while know that about a year ago, I interviewed Dominic, well, about eight months ago, um, and he was 90 days free of pornography. So this is just a one-year follow-up. I think it's very important for guys to know that uh, we don't just do 90-day challenges and then disappear. Uh, so Dominic has been active in our community, lots of exciting things happening in his life. But first of all, I just want to start off with uh, Dominic. For those who are learning about you for the first time, uh, why don't you just introduce yourself, how old you are, and what you're doing right now, like for a living or whether you're in school, who you are. Yeah, of course. Uh, so my name is Dominic Anderson. I'm 22 years old. I'm a full-time student athlete. Um, my nickname is Blair, by the way, but we'll get to that later. You know, that's right. part of the whole thing. But um, yeah, so uh, I've been um, I, I've been struggling with this for about five to six years in total now. Um, I took it seriously last year, back in April, and uh, my life has changed ever since. So. Okay, awesome. Full-time athlete started taking this seriously in April, and you said you've struggled with it for about uh, what five to six years. Yes, around that time, more, more or less, one of the two. But okay, yeah, cool. It's been a, been a ride. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I know that you um, you reached out to me originally to work with me, and I had recommended that you use our free material. So that's what you started doing. Uh, just remind everybody and a refresher, well, a refresher for those who have watched this before and for those who are new, what was the aspect of the porn reboot system that worked out best for you? Yeah, so I mean, uh, I mean, well, one of the things that like needed to be established before that was just me believing that you were able to help me. And mm -hmm. so, you know, one day I was, because uh, I've always had the trouble with inferiority and feeling like, you know, everybody's like around me is better than me. You know, mm. for no apparent reason. Right? And the funny part about that whole thing is that, you know, I've been an athlete, a combat sports athlete my whole life. Mm. So you would think, quote unquote, that I'd be better than everybody else, parenthetically, right? Um, yeah, yeah. For some reason, I always had this, like, feeling of being less than everybody else around me. And I came across one of your videos that talks about, you know, inferiority and what porn does to you. Mm. So um, I was like, man, that's kind of what he's talking about. But um, so you were asking uh, what was, like, the, the thing that really helped me the most was, mm. um, you know, I've, I've reached you know, 30 days before by myself without like any type of system, 60 days, whatever it was, but that didn't sustain me. So like mm -hmm. me understanding that, like, you know, this is going to take a lot longer than just 90 days or whatever it was and mm -hmm. realizing that my, my willpower dissipates and you have a system that basically, you know, I don't have to, it's not as, as much of a, as a mental drain <laughs> versus using willpower. That's the thing that really stuck me. So. Yeah. Okay, cool. So realizing that um, was one of the things that made you come on board with the program. Was there anything specific that you implemented regularly that really helped? Yeah, I mean, one of my biggest things was uh, was boundaries. You know. Um, okay. I, you know, I was I was uh, I realized about myself that you know I was the type of guy who relapsed in the morning. Ah, uh, okay. Namely, wasn't you know it wasn't in the afternoon. It wasn't like you know at school or anything or in the bathroom or nothing like that. It was mm -hmm. at night or in the morning, and you know I okay. had uh, you know problems with like Instagram and getting triggered and, and wondering like you know how come I'm relapsing uh you know thirty days forty five days into into you know whatever I'm doing and um, mm -hmm. you know having boundaries it really stops that once you become disciplined enough to actually implement your boundaries and not respect them mm -hmm. it really really makes a world of difference it, it become it becomes natural to the point where you don't have to think about your boundaries in order to like. Hmm. In, order, in order to be successful and recover next like you know you, you implement boundaries that are strong you don't disrespect them next thing you know you're you're you know so long into the program and, and you know you feel great so hmm. that's okay the boundaries are the biggest thing for me boundaries were the biggest thing for you all right well yeah. dominic you know some guys are going to be watching this and they're going to say like well i've tried to implement boundaries and you say that you just got to be disciplined do you mind sharing with guys um what makes the difference? So some guys are literally going to listen to this and go like, yeah, well, how do I become disciplined with boundaries? What made you stick to your boundaries once you identified that you slipped in the mornings and in the evenings? What, what kept you consistent with the boundaries? Good question. I mean, one of the things was really my accountability partners. 
Okay. Um, after the call, I've gotten a few. So, um, you know, I've had a few guys reach out to me asking uh, if we can work together. And it worked out because, you know, Dequan, he went, uh, we went our separate ways for a little while. Um, yeah. Do you want to introduce, uh, tell for, tell everybody who Dequan is first? Because some people would be watching. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, Dequan, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, for sure, for sure. Uh, Dequan, he was, uh, so I reached out to him. Uh, he made a post in the group about um, in April, I think, of last year, hmm. uh, 2019. And uh, he was saying how he wanted help or whatever. And I was just beginning to, you know, get into this. And so I was like, okay, cool. I can have someone I can work with. Hmm. And so we talked for a little while and I realized that we clicked and connected. So it really worked out. So, like, you know, we had, um, we got on Covenant Eyes together. Okay. Um, we would talk almost every day, like literally, we talk every day on Facebook Messenger. We'd send each other voice notes of how we're doing and everything. And, uh, you know, he was, you know, we'd send each other book rec- recommendations, all that type of stuff. Like we were really going into the program. And, um, mm. you know, he slipped a few, like maybe like he slipped twice in total this whole time mm. out of, uh, from last year until now. And, you know, the first time he slipped, he handled that so well. It was like two weeks into his whole program. He handled it very well. I knew, like, this guy. I'm going to reach incredible strides with this person. So, mm. you know, yeah, so okay. That was awesome. Question. So since yeah. Daquan, since you've had him, you've also had other accountability partners and you feel like having these accountability partners really helped with maintaining the boundaries. So what exactly was going on, Dominic? Were they, um, were they checking in with you at certain times or were you reaching out when you were like, Hey man, I feel like I'm about to cross this boundary. How did that work exactly? I mean, really, it was both, you know, I'd have the kind of ability partners who, you know, they'd hit me up saying, Hey, how's it going? Or, Hey, I'm, I'm messing up in this area. How can I, how can I improve this and vice versa? You know, cause I mean, one, okay. I'll give an example. Of this would be like one of the boundaries that's like most, most, most triggering for me is IG Instagram. Okay. But I also have this thing of, I have this fear of missing out. Right. So, yeah. Um, I, uh, a lot of times, you know, I get like, it's weird, man on Instagram and stuff when I'm off of it. I feel like I'm like like disconnected from everybody else, which which triggers me to be lonely, right? Mm, so okay. I, I hit my accountability partner like, "Hey, man, like I'm feeling kind of lonely. I want to hop back on IG, but I know how dangerous this is for me." I yeah. literally relapsed, being real far into like you know a no fab streak or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Purely because of Instagram, right? Wow. And so okay. I know this has to be the thing that like if I give this up, then I'll I'll be I'll be sober, you know. Yeah. But it's just hard to give it up sometimes, so. You know, uh, okay. just having an accountability partner really helped me with that. And uh, okay, um, so did you get to a... clear about? It. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, I'm um, being clear about the whole thing, like just understanding, like having your boundaries written down. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like being very specific and clear to the T about you know what exactly you need to be refraining from and why. You know what I'm saying? And just having it on paper versus having it in your head to mm-hmm. me is very powerful. So yeah, okay, great. cool. Thanks for sharing that, man. Uh, so out of curiosity, one year later, what's your relationship with Instagram now? In the past, you would feel you get triggered and feel lonely when you disconnected. Um, and this is connected to your fear of missing out. So where are you at with it right now? Um, I've, I've got to control of myself. Um, so, but I don't like I used to spend hours on it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I'd have lots of free time and spend hours on it and whatnot. Now I just have more control work. I'll post a story here and there, maybe a picture, but I don't spend too much time on it. On it. And, you know, I just, I, I keep it, I still have boundaries with myself. Though. So, like, I'm, like, an example of this would be I don't go on women's pages. I don't click that explore button. You know okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, keep it, keep it. I, I treat it as Facebook, you know, Facebook accepts. With Facebook, you kind of have control of what you see, in, mm-hmm. in a sense. I yeah. I don't. So, True. I just kind of keep it to where I'm like, uh, not looking at women's pages and going across those boundaries. I don't even really follow women on Instagram, just as friends in general. So that helps out too. So um, I, I still have it, but I'm very cautious about it because I know how how you know how much it can affect. So got it. Okay, so you've got some boundaries within Instagram, like not following women's pages, and you go in there to do something very specific when you go in there to post. Okay, that's good. So Dominic, what uh, what would you say is the value? Um, what has been the impact of following the system on your goals over the past year? What are some of the things that have changed in your life for the better? You're talking about the implementation, right? Yeah, just uh, well, just implementing the, the the actual program. So, just so you guys know, Dominic is also a member of our um, reboot implementation program. He'd already mastered the basics of our system just using the free material. Which, by the way, for those of you working uh, who are 
listening to this is probably one of the best ways to do this is to struggle on your own for a little bit. I don't need you guys to buy a program. Learn the system for free with the free stuff that's out there. And then if you feel you want to move a little bit faster or get more established in the program, then think about joining our implementation program. But from either, from the free material or the implementation program, Dominic, what has changed in your life, man? Yeah, man. I mean, honestly, so I mentioned earlier that my nickname is Blair. And Blair. What that means B-L-A-I-R? Is, yeah, Blair, exactly. And All right. what that, that means is that's a person who basically sticks out and, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he shines above everybody else. And to further extend on that, it's somebody who brings value to others and others see value in them. Okay. You know All right. And, and so, yeah. you know, I gave myself that nickname due to like, it's funny, man, one of the first modules of your program really, really helped me. It was, you know, you're figuring out, you know, how you want to be on the other side of this whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Like what you want in your life and, and like, what do you want to accomplish and achieve? Mm. And, you know, I just, you know, I just like who I, was, who I was before and who I'm becoming now are two totally different people. It's like night and day. If you were to write, if you would add two sheets of paper and put the uh, characteristics on each paper, you'd see the two totally, totally different people. Yeah. You know, and so um, I just uh, what I what I did was in the very beginning of the program uh, mm. when I when I came across the module about you know you you figuring out how you want to be and, and you know who you want to become on the other side of this addiction. Mm-hmm. Uh, I uh, I wrote I wrote down exactly who I wanted to become and gave myself a nickname. And I, so now I'm always striving to be, become Blair. You see what I'm saying? Because okay. really, at the end of the day, you know who you want to become is not going to be you're not going to reach that person until you're on the other side of this addiction. Mm. So uh, you know that's like the main thing for me because like you know people use like things like women wanting cars and and money and all that stuff which is great you know yeah i don't i don't don't knock them for that but that's not really feasible for me that's i I need something that's within myself in order to like like aside from everything else like that stuff will come you know what i'm saying but i need to make sure that i'm the best i can possibly be and so Hmm. i'm striving to become the person you know what i'm saying okay so that's like the most value is probably that just that alone that's in the very beginning of the program you know what i'm saying so Okay, awesome. So if I get this right, you created this persona for yourself for who you want to be. You didn't go out and look to anybody. You didn't look to anything. You're like, all right, who's the person I want to be? And this guy is Blair. That's your nickname now. And so this individual within you is kind of, he sets the standard for who you want to be. Dude, that's powerful, man. That's really powerful. I mean, don't get me wrong like i've looked at I've, i look to others for you know inspiration and all that mm-hmm. uh, i really want to figure out how i want to be just in the period you know what i'm saying like i yeah but of course i look to other people like you know for like, like guidance and all that and like mm-hmm. he's a good example for, let me follow some of his footsteps that sort of thing but in general i'm looking inside of myself and i want to bring that out so okay excellent yeah. So what would you say to somebody, well, in, in the group, before we even get to this, um, you know, in the group, we've seen you post pictures of your wins. I think I, you, you're a purple belt in Brazil, Brazilian jiu-jitsu and you're a wrestler. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do in terms of competition and athletically and how your uh, reboot may have uh, impacted that area of your life? Yeah, so I've been uh, doing jiu-jitsu and wrestling for the past six years. I uh, started back when I was, uh, I think, 15 or 16, I'm 22 now, so. Yeah. And um, man, you know, it's funny, like my, my plats, like where I really started to peak was um was before I became an addict, unfortunately. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like when I was uh, 16 through 18. Yeah. And then now, now that I'm free from it. And so I, what happened in the middle was, you know, a lot of, um because, you know, I, honestly, I, I used to be the hardest worker I knew until, mm-hmm. until, I, until this, uh, you know, came into my life and, uh, you know, like I used to like compete, you know, train hard. I was very extremely disciplined on my diet, on my training, and you know, never missed a practice. Mm. And then this came into play. You know, this started to become a part of my life, and you know, everything started to go downhill for me like, as far as my athletics go. And then even like in terms of like my uh, academics, also because I'm a full time student, um, you know, and uh, you know, so like an example of like it going downhill for me would be like I would get um, extremely like nervous before my competitions when that's not something that used to happen to me before. Very okay. Nervous, you know? like, okay. I always feel like, because I, I always feel like no matter whether I beat this guy three or four times before or not, mm-hmm. I always feel like I was going to lose for some reason. It, it was just awful. You know what I'm saying? And, and okay. the things that need to be, they, they can't be there when you're a competitor. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Because you, you, your mind already goes in a lot of different places, period. And so, mm-hmm. you know, just having that extra weight on your back, is not going to help you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. 
And so yeah. how did how did that change for you? So no more nervousness before competition. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different areas that it actually affected, but uh, yeah. So like, um, I competed this past weekend and two yeah. weekends before that. Okay. I won both times. I, I won both okay. Times. Congratulations. The whole thing is that. Uh, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. And the funny part about the whole thing is that you know, I competed against a guy who beat me in 2017 in one minute. This guy destroyed me. Right. Wow. And so I, I beat. I, I, I met him again this past weekend, and I destroyed him. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, think that PMO made the difference. Just give me, you know, you know what I'm nice. saying. Nice. Uh, my mindset was just just super sharp. You know, I wasn't uh, nervous out there as I usually was. And you know, one thing that also was taken away from me due to the addiction was the fact that um, I would be extremely tired. Like mm. I just didn't have the motivation to do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I got to be training. I'd be doing all this type of cool stuff beforehand, but I just didn't have the motivation as I do now. You know what I'm saying? And so. I would be very lazy out there. I just kind of want to get it over with, have that sort of mentality. Now I'm more energetic, you know, charismatic on the mat. My body language is up. My confidence is up. I just feel like a totally different athlete afterwards, you know? Okay. And so it just made the world a difference for me. I almost quit because of this stuff. So okay. Wow. You almost quit. There was a tournament that I was doing uh, back in March 2018. Okay. And I just felt so, like, shitty because I'm like, man, it's funny. Almost after, almost before and after every tournament, I would relapse. It was, it, okay. The addiction was just so bad for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before and after every one of them, and then obviously in between that, I'm throwing like garbage. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like crap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying so. It was just uh, yeah. I almost quit. I, I didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't know what I wanted to do in life anymore. I was just so uh, drawn with my addiction. I used to go on just these horrible binges, try to forget about things. And, mm-hmm. you know. Okay, dude. Well, we're glad that you didn't quit, and we're glad that you're winning. How does your future look, man? How do you feel? Well, I know you're still 22, still in college. I'm not going to ask you what are you going to do with your future, but how do you feel about your future now compared to how you did a year ago? Man, every time I think about my future, I almost cry. I'm so excited. Because like, I told you I want to be part of the NCAA. Yeah. I'm the only person in my family that I know of from my immediate family that's, that's ever going to be part of the NCAA for wrestling or for any sport in general, but for wrestling in particular. Yeah, you know, and, and so um, um, I started my my collegiate athletic freshman in the fall. I'm going for four years, and I'm gonna get my master's degree after that. And um, I'm just looking forward to it because now PMO is not a part of my life anymore. You know. Yeah. And and um, yeah, man, I just uh, just just that you know, I'm, I'm looking at um, a few schools. Um, one of the schools I'm looking at is in Ohio. <laughs> in okay. Ohio. All it's right. One of the top NCAA schools in the country right now, so I'm uh, looking forward to it. So that's exciting stuff, man. It's, it's great to, to hear somebody have clarity about their future. Uh, that's a big goal. And we're going to be, we're going to be keeping up with you, man. to hear about your successes and see you hit these goals. Um, before we round up here, what are some just thoughts personally from Dominic to all the brothers who are going to be watching this? Most of who are still struggling with their behavior with porn and masturbation. What do you have to say to them? What are some thoughts, just personal thoughts and what, whatever you feel uh, comes from your heart to share with them. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, um, just when it comes to like the, the, the porn review system um, or just any, like quoting porn in general, I would say, uh, you know, for most guys out there, a practical approach is the best approach. You know, and you hear of like the, uh, the no fap and the, uh, you know, the, the, the um, sex anonymous Whatever yeah, called, yeah. Like Semen retention. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, all that type of stuff. It's great uh, for like short-term goals, parenthetically. Like a lot of guys, they reach those goals like 30 days, 45 days, whatever it is, but that's not going to sustain you. Yeah. And I would say just find something that's going to be, you'll be able to implement and be happily, happy implementing until the reboot's over, which is, you know, a lot longer than 90 days or however long you're trying to reach. So, And just, you know, being cheap is expensive, you know, I would say, um, it's because I mean, obviously a lot of guys who are watching this video, obviously have an issue with this whole thing. They've been struggling with it for years and they couldn't give it up on their own. Yeah. So what I would say is, you know, just, um, you know, I mean, you see the success stories, you see like the, um, the transformations that, you know, come about through, you know, using your system, using like what you've implemented, which I have, I have no one to thank except for you, man. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, just, you know, make that commitment, you know what I'm saying? Make that, um, mm-hmm. Make that investment in yourself. I mean, because really what's going to happen if, you know, I, I mean, like, let's say, for example, a guy, you know, he wants to join the implementation, but he feels like it's cost too much money or whatever. Whatever the situation may be, um, you know, 
I'm, like being cheap is very expensive. I mean, at, at the expense of your life, are you going to not give up, you know, a few dollars for uh, the, the rest of your, um, the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's already, it's already taken away from you four or five, six years, 10 years, decades, whatever, however long it's taken away from you. Yeah. You want to get those, you want to get that time back? You know what I'm saying? I just, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> well, you've, you've heard it from Dominic guys. I, I actually, I really appreciate your time, man. And I would say this, um, uh, for those of you who are watching this video, if you go on YouTube and you go back about eight months, or you just go to my YouTube channel and you search for Dominic, you're going to see my interview with him almost a year ago. And um, it, it's, it's, a, it's amazing to see the subtle changes, which I see. I'm not going to explain it to you guys. I'm let you guys watch it. And you see the changes in confidence. You see the certainty uh, that Dominic has. I don't know if you've watched the old video recently. But there are so many little changes there. So it's really great to see. Uh, we're going to be following up with you, man, hopefully over the next year to see how you're doing. I wish you all the best. I'm, I, I know that you're going to become an NCAA athlete. I know that's going to happen. But just make sure you let us know, man, when that happens. Dominic <laughs> is big in our group. If you're not a member of our Facebook group, uh, Brothers Join. All the people that I interview are real. Um, these are people who you don't need to talk to me and ask me about Dominic. You can hit up Dominic yourself and ask him about his experience. He's a busy guy, but he'll get back to you when he has time. Oh, and also don't waste his time because he's kind of like me. If you waste his time in the DMs, <laughs> he's going to block you. <laughs> all right. These guys, these guys are hysterical sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. It's all good. So respect, respect him when you slide into DMs. All right. Dominic, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great day, man. I'm JK, your brother in the struggle. Now, whenever you're ready to reach out, there are links in the description of this podcast for you. I'll see you on the brighter side of your recovery. Have a great day.